In this video, I'm going to talk about the strcmp string comparison function that allows us to compare two strings, say to check if they're equal or not. So to use this function, we're going to have to include string.h because that's the library where the function is defined. And then we'll make two strings to test this function out with. So we'll say here car s1 is equal to this is the way. And then we'll say car s2 is equal to this is the way. And we're going to say that these two strings are equal because they have all the same characters at the same positions and they're the same length. So these two strings are equal. Now we might think that we could check if they're equal by using the equality operator. We might think we could say if S1 is equal to S2, print F equal, otherwise print F not equal. So else print F not equal. This won't actually work. And even the compiler will tell us that we're doing something wrong here. If we try to compile this, it says, warning array comparison always evaluates the false and that's because if i do a comparison of s1 and s2 using this equality operator what we're really checking is if the memory address of s1 is equal to the memory address of s2 and they'll never be equal because this is stored in a different place of me in memory than this chunk of memory here this is the way so they're, they're two different things in memory and s1 is a different memory address than s2 and so because of that this will never actually be equal that's what it's warning us about there so if we want to do string comparison to actually check the content of the data in memory to check if this strings content is equal to this string's content, that's where we're going to use the string comparison function. So the way the function works is if the strings are equal, it's going to return zero. Otherwise, it's not going to return zero. So we'll try the equality case first. Let's actually try this. We'll say if string comparison s1, s2 is equal to zero, we'll say print f strings are equal. So say strings are equal. And then we can just compile it here and run it and we'll get strings are equal here. So what's going on here is the function compares the characters in each string one at a time, checking to see if they're the same. And it reaches the end of both strings and we still have that all the characters are the same across the entire length of the strings and therefore it returns zero. That's its behavior. And so this is a quick way of checking if two strings are equal. Now, what if the strings are not equal? So the behavior there gets more interesting. So if the first non-matching character has a lower ASCII value in S1 than S2, it's going to return less than zero, a number that's less than zero. If the first non-matching character has a higher ASCII value in, in S1 than S2, it's going to return a number greater than zero. Now, exactly which number it returns is actually not 100% defined. That's actually something that's specific to each compiler, but we know that we're going to get this behavior, that the return value is going to be less than zero in this case and greater than zero in this case. But what does it mean for the first non-matching character to have a lower or higher ASCII value? So when we say non-matching character, we mean that as the characters in each string are being compared one at a time, eventually you're going to have a potentially non-matching character. So maybe like this character here, doesn't match this character here. And this is where you've got like a non-matching character because at the same position in each string, the character doesn't match anymore. So if that's the case, we'd say we have a non-matching character. Now, if the strings are of unequal length, we're still gonna have a non-matching character because say this string is missing the period here. We're gonna have a non-matching character at this point because this string is gonna have a period, whereas this string is gonna be at its null terminator at that point. So even if the strings are of different length, you're still gonna have a non-matching character. So what does it mean though when it says if the first non-matching character has a lower ASCII value versus this higher ASCII value? So remember that the way that numbers are represented in C is with what are called the ASCII character set. And the ASCII character code, it sort of gives a mapping of numbers to letters and other symbols. So like, Ultimately, in your computer, all data is represented as zeros and ones. It's all just binary numbers at the end of the day. And so the way computers represent characters is by having an association between certain numbers and certain characters. So like this number here in zeros and ones, that's 67 in a decimal number format, which is representing the letter C. And like 70 represents the letter F. And so when it says if the first non-matching character has a higher ASCII value in S1 than S2, it's referring to these values here. So like if the first non-matching character is, let's say like F versus C, then if the first 
non-matching character has a higher ASCII value in S1 than S2, we're going to expect to get a greater than zero value back. So let's give this a test. We'll say here, else if, we'll say string comparison, S1, S2, and here we're going to say less than zero. We're going to say printf, S1 is less than S2. Else, if string comparison, S1, S2 is greater than zero, we're going to say printf, S1 is greater than S2. Okay, so let's give this a try now. And we'll do it with one character off here. We're going to say that we'll change the S here to an A. Okay, so we'll change the S to an A, we recompile it, we run it, and we get that S1 is less than S2. And that's because the first non-matching character here, A versus S, A has a lower ASCII value, and that's why we get this here, because th this character here, A, has a lower ASCII value than this character here, S. So if we were to bring up that this, this chart again here, we've got like A has 97, and S has the value 115, right? So we have that the first non-matching character has a lower ASCII value in S1 than S2 because A, which is 97, is less than S, which is 115. Now, if we were to flip that around, we would get the opposite. So if we flipped around and said like S and A here, now we're gonna get the opposite where we're gonna get that S1 is now greater than S2 because we have this property that the first non-matching character has a higher ASCII value S in S1 than S2 A. So that's the STR CMP function, the string comparison function in C, and it's useful for checking if strings are equal and other such things. So hopefully this has been helpful. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.